there's a huge difference in how you can feel the ball when you play. And if you play a lot more, you start to notice a difference in your game too by just switching paddles. Sometimes people notice it instantly. They're like, wow, I can really feel it. While other people, they maybe just haven't felt it that well. Uh, some people just feel it more than others, but there is a big difference to the game when you try a different paddle. Even the weight you put on a paddle changes the game significantly. Hi, I'm Crystal Brown, your host, and today we get a chance to speak with Brendan Dollard. He is the son of two pickleball pros and the owners of Level Up Pickleball Camp, not to mention U.S. Pickleball Magazine. Brendan Dollard knows pickleball. As a pro himself, he clearly knew that he could revolutionize the sport one paddle at a time. Be the very first to hear about his new paddle line called Trinity and where you can get your hands on these awesome paddles. All right, now to the show. Welcome to Simply Pickleball, the podcast where we discuss all things pickleball, the fastest growing sport in America and around the world. We are interviewing the founders, industry leaders, athletes, lovers of the sport that are driving the spectacular growth. If you love pickleball as much as we do, listen in. Awesome. Well, Brendan Dollard, thank you so much for joining today. I'm really excited to be talking to you about your new paddle company and of course your background in pickleball. But before we get too deep into paddles, which we will, um, I, I just wanted to, if you could share a little bit about your background and how you got to interested in pickleball to begin with. Yeah. So uh, growing up, I was a big tennis player. Uh, my family wanted a bunch of kids that played tennis and pickleball wasn't really like the big thing. But no. over, yeah, but like over some time period, you know, after playing a lot of tennis, you know, and pickleball started picking up, my parents were getting into it. And they said, hey, Brendan, you should check out the sport yourself. And from there on, I just started playing. So your parents are pretty ambitious, right? They were tennis players and pro pickleball players, and they run level up pickleball camp. Did you feel pressure to sort of get into the family sport or the family business when you were growing up? No, my entire life, I'm very close with my parents and I've always wanted to work with them. And it was really cool that like growing up, pickleball came along and we got introduced to it and we got on top of it. So when I got out of college and they were doing this pickleball gig, I was like, this is awesome. I really want to be a part of this. So with the camps and everything in my background, tennis, learning the sport was a different change, but it was so much fun getting good at it and then being able to teach for them. Yeah. Did your dad say, look, before you can teach and be a pro for a while of camps, you have to get better yourself? Did he put you up to that challenge? No, I was a high level tennis player growing up in Western Pennsylvania. I was ranked number one at one point. And then I play a lot of tennis for Penn State. So he knew I could get really good if I wanted to get good. So it was a matter of, am I going to go play? And if I was put in the environment of, you know, teaching all the times, I was going to hear what they say all the time. And then eventually after the camp, I was just going to play with the pros. And uh, that's how I got really good was just a lot of playing a lot of understanding of how you're supposed to play the game. Yeah. So I met you and your dad at one of the level up pickleball camps down in Newport Beach, which was amazing. I can't wait to go to another camp. But what I was really struck by is, you know, you have all these pros that are playing and you all are teaching at a very high level and have such a good command of the sport. But that's different than maybe playing, right? Like you could have gone a route of, hey, I'm just going to become a pro myself and I'm going to go on tour and but you chose the route of being a pro at a camp yeah i find it really rewarding seeing people get better and honestly when i first started playing pickleball i never thought i was going to go like pro or anything so i never even considered the possibility of playing in tournaments or any of that so when i started teaching for them i started getting really good just by playing with pros on tour i was like okay well that's a possibility so i might actually start playing more tournaments but as of right now just teaching alone is rewarding for itself because you go out there, you see people getting a lot better. And that's honestly the most joyful thing that like I show up for. It's not to give my explanation so much as see other people happy, smiling, getting better. That's amazing. So is, if you could pick anything that you focus on at the camps, where do you see the biggest jump for people? Like, is there an area, is it from you know, beginner to intermediate or intermediate to advanced? Is there specific skill that you teach that you can really see makes a big difference? So I think that the biggest thing that people need to work on in the intermediate level is literally staying up that line, taking balls out of the air. And so when they're trying to jump to that advanced level, that's what we strongly make people work on. If right. it's, you know, the beginner level, it's like serving and returning. They need to get their shots in. The more shots they hit, the better they're going to be. They just need to get repetition in. 
Yeah. And at the advanced level, I would say there's a lot of specialty shots and some strategies that we'd work on, especially moving through the, we call it the land of opportunity or the, you guys might refer to it as like the transition zone. Yeah. Um, but we talk about that a lot at the advanced level and strategy on working with your partner. Yeah. Okay. It's time for me to go to back to camp, but uh, moving on, because I know we want to talk about paddles. At the camps, you guys have a tent. Usually you have a bunch of different paddles by a bunch of different paddle manufacturers. So you become a de facto expert in paddles. What did you sort of see that was missing? So yeah, when we were at these camps teaching pickleball, we have the opportunity for other people, campers, we call them, to go ahead and pick up a paddle and try it out. We have a bunch of top brands that are on our table that we can select. Mentioned names are like uh, Selkirk or Paddle Tech or Yola or Carbon. There's a lot of great brands that we choose on the table specific to the level at the camp. Right. And so I would see a bunch of people come to our camp with technology that's not as new as today, such as like fiberglass paddles or plastic paddles, while everyone's moving over to like more carbon fiber based paddles. Me, by the way, I had a fiberglass paddle when I showed up at one of your camps. I really didn't know that there was a difference. Yeah, there's a huge difference in how you can feel the ball when you play. And if you play a lot more, you start to notice a difference in your game too, by just switching paddles. Sometimes people notice it instantly. They're like, while I can really feel it, while other people, they maybe just haven't felt it that well. Some people just feel it more than others. But there is a big difference to the game when you try a different paddle. Even the weight you put on a paddle changes the game significantly. Yeah, so that was another thing. You guys all encouraged us to put lead tape if we didn't have it on the paddles. And can you share a little bit about why you guys recommend that? Yeah, sure. So even if you're like 90 years old, I would recommend you putting weight on your paddle. You should not be playing with a lightweight paddle. I feel like a lot of people make lightweight paddles because they think people feel like that's what they need. They say, oh, I'm going to get tennis elbow if I have a heavier paddle. But that's not necessarily the case. Everyone on tour plays with a heavier paddle and it's not because they're on tour and they're so good. It's because they see the benefits to having a heavier paddle. By just weighting it more, it's more stable. You don't have to grip as hard. You don't have to swing as hard. You get a bigger sweet spot and you get more power. So all the above reasons, you just want weight on your paddle. If you're concerned about hand speed, just get in a ready position at all times. Don't keep your paddle all the way by your knees. Just keep it up a lot higher. Yeah, it's interesting you should say that because there is, for some reason, I think players believe that the heavier the paddle, the more likely they're going to get tennis or now a pickleball elbow. But what you're saying is that it's actually because it's a lighter paddle potentially, or it has a lower swing rate that they could be getting injuries anyway, right? Yeah. I would say the, the main reasons people are getting injuries in pickleball is because they're gripping too tight and they're over swinging. And also the third reason in the major one is that they're using wrong grips when they're holding their paddle. So when they're hitting the shot, they're starting to put strain on their elbow. That's really interesting. I, I know in golf, for example, the grip can make all the difference in the way you play. So I think what you're saying, so everyone's going to have to go to camp so they can learn a little bit more. But so then again, you had all of these paddles on the table, great brands that you know and like, but mm -hmm. you, you saw something and I, can you share with us what, what needs to be on the table that wasn't there? So at the moment, I think a lot of the brands out there are always trying to reinvent the wheel. They're trying to make it better. No one's trying to say, hey, let's just stick with uh, wooden paddles. Let's just stick with fiberglass paddles or plastics. They're, everyone's saying, hey, let's do something better. So I saw the need for that too. And so I made it a mission a year ago to start trying to make a paddle that was going to change the sport. So I started making a paddle called the Revolution Series. And that's what I came up with as of recently. It got approved by USAPA a month ago. And then we're going to be putting them on the market in November. So when you say revolutionize the sport or what you named the revolutionary series, again, what do you think was missing or what do you think the sport can continue to grow? I mean, I know that this is the case with skiing, right? The got better skis or even I was a swimmer and they made swimsuits out of paper at one point that was that thin, you know, because you're going to go faster in the water. So what did you think that there was room to improve in the game? I just feel like the way that paddles are made are very simple and, and easy to do and replicate. And a lot of people are, are just, there's like over a thousand manufacturers right now. It's because everyone can reproduce the exact same thing. And I just feel like if we could make a better paddle, maybe a little bit harder to manufacture, but 
a better one specifically for higher level players that the sport could improve. And I saw a lot of people just kind of, it's a copy and paste type thing where they said, hey, we're going to go get some carbon fiber, honeycomb, another carbon fiber, glue it together, put it on Amazon or something to see if it sells. And I said, I want to do something a little bit more. So you created Trinity. It's not yet launched in terms of shipping, but people can pre-order. Can you share about how these are constructed to change the game? Yeah, so they're thermoformed or heat pressed. Basically, they're wrapped with carbon fiber. They're put in like a metal mold and they're put inside of a a heat press, a high temperature oven. And uh, basically, I said, these are the shapes I'd like it at. This is the weight I would like it at. I'd like it foam injected in a certain area. I like it with this kind of carbon fiber from this country and in this thickness. And for those reasons, I said, that's what I want in a paddle. Not many people are doing this, this area, this thickness, this shape, this curve, this hole. I thought if I can put all the best elements of different paddles that I like, maybe I like something from Paddle Tech, maybe I like something from Selkirk or, or, yeah. or Gyola, and I can like put things together and I can say, okay, why not take a little bit of the best from this and this and this and put together? I could have a really great paddle starting out. That's why it took me so long, like a year to, to create something like this, because I wanted something really good. I didn't want to just throw another paddle out and mark it. Some people are just saying, hey, let's get something started, which I think is perfect. I think a lot of people should get started. Like I missed the boat not getting it started soon enough, but I wanted a really good paddle out there. I don't think you've missed the boat at all. Just so you know, the the market is just exploding. And I think the interest in paddles, I think that the understanding of paddle technology is also growing. So there's some very, very interested paddle nerds, supposedly. That's what and they paddle call Paddle collectors. Yeah. <laughs> paddle collectors. You can see in my background, I might be one of them. But, you know, on Discord and Reddit, there's people are really talking because they want to understand it. And so when you have a new paddle with new technology, and again, you're an expert, you have been playing with and demoing and describing paddles. So let's jump in. So you have six paddles coming out and maybe you Mm -hmm. can start with whichever one you want to start with and sort of explain what you've done. So the first three are uh, the Thermopress paddles. I've got the Ethos, the Logos, and the Pathos series. And this is all based on, they're all the same exact type of paddle. But if you said, hey, I want a little bit more reach, you might want to go with the Ethos. If you said, hey, I want to go with a little bit more of a bigger sweet spot, you might want to go with something like this, the frying pan looking one, the Logos. It's a little bit wider. It's going to give you a bigger sweet spot. USAPA regulations say you can't exceed a certain surface area. And so people, manufacturers, they say, okay, we're going to go longer. We're going to go wider. And it's all the same shape. And they don't change the technology for their series. They just say, okay, we're going to go longer, or wider, or something in between a hybrid. And the third one is a hybrid. And that's for maybe a little bit of both. Is that why yeah. someone might be a hybrid? So uh, that might be our most popular one, or it might be Logos, honestly, because the bigger sweet spot. It's hybrid because you get a little bit reach, don't get the full reach like the Ethos, and you get a little bit more width, not like the Logos, though, because that's not as wide. But if you want something in between, you say, hey, I'm not exactly sure where I'm at, but I like your paddle. I want to go with one of them. That might be a good one to start out with. Mm -hmm. So you said they're all constructed the same way. So they all are thermoform. They all have the same type of carbon wrap and Mm -hmm. grit. All of that's the same. It's just the shape that's different. And why did you choose to have the hole? I I, I don't know if that's a technical term, but I know for some paddles, like Selkirk is known to have a hole. Why did you choose to put that on your paddle? And does it have a function? You can spin it on your finger. (laughs) (laughs) Which I do with mine. (laughs) <laughs> uh, honestly, every time I go on the court, I start spinning it on my finger. It's addictive. Some people are putting their finger in there and holding on to it. I don't recommend that. But um, I think the big advantage to it is the fact that your swing speed is going to be a little bit quicker because it has a little bit more airflow in it. And we just designed the look to look kind of cool. That's why uh-huh. it's got like a little wing type thing inside of it. Um, oh, the nest. But yeah. Um, Can you does- show me the design on that? Also, the surface design of the, of that paddle. I know it has. Yeah, definitely. It's very purposeful, right? Yeah. So I called it Trinity because I'm religious and everything. I'm I'm Christian. And I wanted to do something that kind of involved what I enjoy in life, my faith, and also pickleball. I wanted to combine the two. And so that's what I did for this sport. The logo has a bird on it in the center. It's got a mountain and an ocean. And if you know anything about like Noah's Ark, you know, they had a bird, a dove that flew out to go find land, the mountain, and they were on the sea, the water. 
So that's why I named it the Trinity Series. That's the logo there. I Trinity is three. So I named it Ethos, Pathos, and Logos. I thought that was a cool uh, putting yeah. together. And brand matters. You know, I've been thinking and talking a lot to different brands and you do want to stand out on the court in addition to being able to back it up with a great paddle. It's really the only thing they have to give themselves a little bit of a, their own branding on the court. Eventually, maybe there'll be more. And people want to know which pros are playing with what paddle because they want to play well. So then you have another set of three paddles and maybe you can describe why you decided to have more than three. Yeah, so I also have three more coming out. They're going to be called our Power Series. I have not had them approved by USAPA yet. I will be sending them out. But basically, I said, okay, with the Thermoform paddles, they have a lot of power in the mill, their own. So I went with a, a 19 millimeter thickness, which no one has really done in the sport for Thermoform. I don't think they have, at least. So I decided to go with that. But for my uh, Power Series, I decided to stay with cold press paddles. I like to think of Thermopress paddles as burritos, and I like to think of Cold press paddles is like sandwiches, like they glued together and everything. And so I found shapes that I thought I, I liked a certain angles on them so I could hold it better. The cold press paddles are usually, well, what I made them for was for people who are used to their current paddle, but they might want to try something new. We went with like a, a 13 or 14 millimeter paddle. Again, we're still deciding which one before sending off to USAPA, which is going to have more power because it's thinner. But honestly, I like the shape. I like the type of carbon fiber we use for it. It's just determining which thickness we want to go for because it does make a difference. Yeah. For over a decade, pickleball paddles have remained virtually unchanged, the same appearance, the same materials, and a similar level of performance. But that era is over. Allow us to introduce the Revolution Series by Trinity, foreshadowing a new era of innovation, presenting our trio of paddles. The ethos, logos, and pathos. Our state-of-the-art technology has been tried and tested by highly decorated pros. Our mission is to elevate the level of play for all athletes. Our Revolution Series features an advanced polymer core wrapped with space-age carbon materials, resulting in the most aerodynamic paddles on the market. Our paddles increase spin, power and control to unprecedented levels. It's not just a new paddle, it's a new beginning. So what is the difference if you have 19 millimeters? That sounds like a pretty thick paddle. Does it impact the weight or does it impact the power? What's the difference? So if, if you go really thin, it's going to feel more like a board. But if you go a lot thicker, it's going to feel like a cushion or like a more trampoline feel. Yeah. And when you're playing high level pickleball, you need more feel, which is why we made these paddles. And they're more for higher level players or intermediate players that want to get to that advanced level. We want to really have a good paddle out there, not something on the market. Right. And so with the, the thinner paddles here, we went with a 13 millimeter paddle. So they have more power. So we just kind of felt like themselves, they had enough control, but we wanted it to have more power. So A little more power. So would you imagine a higher level player would want more power or, or maybe an intermediate or beginner want more power? Because I, I feel like everyone wants everything, right? Spin, control, and power, but... Well, who's the target market for that? that? It's so tricky to say because you could look at someone on tour and you could say, you know, this person's known for being such a controlled player. Like he's just constantly dinking at the kitchen line and, and resetting while other people are very much aggressive and, and attacking constantly. So th it's tricky to say which is best for someone else because I feel like everyone's game is tailored differently. Yeah. Do you feel like a paddle can make a player play better or do you feel like it makes them feel like they can play better like <laughs> i i feel like the sound that comes off of, of paddle makes someone feel better they say oh wow i, I can hit that ball a lot harder if the yeah. sound is like a, a lower or a higher pitched um i feel like the graphic designs on a paddle sometimes say hey i feel so much better of a player i i can play so much better because i feel confident with my paddle and yeah. not necessarily so I feel like just having confidence in yourself is also going to make you play better. There's many reasons for why someone plays better, but I do think that the paddle itself and how it responds to the ball and your play style is really going to make a difference because, you know, you might try a paddle on our table and say, hey, this is a great paddle for me, but your best friend might try it and say, oh, no, that's not for me. I like this paddle. That's true. I can just say that I hadn't had the opportunity to demo paddles. It's not easy when you play somewhere that's not in a club where they have a lot of paddles. 
it was such a great experience to be able to demo them. And I will say instantly when I tried a paddle that I ended up buying, I did feel completely different. I mean, it was no question. Again, I don't know if my game changed that much, but it felt a lot different for me. So yeah. getting back to the lead tape, you guys suggest putting lead tape or weight, but Trinity as your brand have come out with product that is not exactly like lead tape, but it does add weight. Is that right? Yeah, I don't have it on me, but yes, we have like a weighted tape that we put on our paddles. We used to touch lead tape all the time for the last few years I've been teaching at Level Up. I teach about 50 camps with, I'm one of the seven head pros that travels around teaching. And I'd constantly have to put lead tape on people's paddles. They would have like a lightweight paddle. And I'd say, you don't need to get a whole new paddle. We can just weigh it up to make it better. We can add that weight to have more power and a bigger sweet spot. And so constantly I was touching lead tape and it was making my fingers numb. And of course we put electrical tape over top of it just so you're never touching it. Yeah. But I just felt like that was an unhealthy way to go. Yeah. So I decided to go ahead and recreate uh, or create something where it's a, a weighted tape that you can go stick on your paddle that isn't lead. Oh, that's a great idea. What other products have you guys developed besides... So there's three paddles that are approved and then three that potentially will be and then the weighted tape. Do you have other products you guys are planning to sell? So yeah, we have ball carts. We created hats. Uh, there's like six different hats Ooh, we have. We've, I like this. We've got black <laughs> ones. We got we got white ones with pink on it. We've got pink ones and we've got other black ones. Oh, so. that's a, um, and I we see all, you're wearing a logo on your sweatshirt. Oh yeah, we got, we got hoodies too. <laughs> <laughs> they're nice. They they feel good. They're a mixture of like spandex and cotton. We also have shirts here. They kind of have like a halo or like a Lululemon feel. We've got pink ones and cool backgrounds and blue ones and long sleeves. So you'll have to check that out on our website. Yes, we will. So is it hard to get, is it USPA approved? Yes, Pickleball yeah. Association? How, yeah. What's that process like? Because I don't know if all the paddles that are on for sale on Amazon or, or approved, but you are trying to get approved. And, and why does it help to be approved? So USA Pickleball is like a, a very good standard for keeping the sport a certain level. They don't want it to exceed a certain amount. They don't want you putting shards of glass on your paddle and hitting balls that are be too bouncy, too high or whatever. They regulate different paddles so that you're not having a, a super long paddle that you don't even have to. Right. So that's why these tournaments have something like a, a body telling them, hey, this is how we want to run things. Yeah. And I think it's very important that they're there. I think it's, it's, it's every sport needs something like that. And the way you go through getting paddles approved is you have to register as a brand, a manufacturer, and then you have to go ahead and you can purchase different things. You could say, hey, I want to go ahead and, and just get the face uh, to see if uh, it, it's legally going to pass. You could say, hey, I want to make sure that the coefficient of uh, flexion or whatever of the ball on the paddle is going to go pass. You can get different things passed. You can pay money to go do that. You have to send a certain amount of paddles, like six of them, to their warehouse in different sections in the United States, and they do tests on them. But if you just want to say, hey, I made a paddle, Let's just go and test it. I think it's like $600 or something to go ahead and get it tested, but you have to send the final result to them. Yeah, that's good. You're right. It is important. And so would you imagine that, I mean, can you imagine a pro deciding they want to be sponsored by you or picking up your paddle and saying, I want to play with your paddle versus the one they're playing with right now? Is that what you <laughs> <laughs> That would be awesome. I would love to do that, but I want to first get my name out there with other people. I will get other pros to probably be sponsored by me, but I'm not looking for Anna Lee or Ben Johns at the moment. But yes, high level players, some people in the, the community that would like to promote the paddle that really like it, instructors or even like online stores or whatever, I'll be reaching out to different places to see if that's something they would be interested in. So where do you plan to sell these paddles to begin with? You have a website, right? So that's the first place people can go. And it, it's TR, it's Trinity but T-R-N-I-T-Y, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, it's T-R-N-I-T-Y pickleball.com. We just thought it would be a cooler look on a, on a brand that we took out an eye. So you can go ahead and, and purchase them on our website. You'll see them advertised in Pickleball Magazine, along with some facilities are going to have our banner showcased on there. We're probably going to reach out again to clubs and, and instructors and online stores to go promote us. But for right now, you can find us at trinitypickleball.com. In about a month, you said they'll start, they'll be in stock. 
Is that right? Correct. If, if you want to go ahead and uh, put your email, you can Google us. You can go on our site and put your email there. You can sign up for a wait list or say, hey, let me know when this is available. You can find us there. Awesome. I can't wait actually to try it out. So before we finish, I, I mean, we were talking a little bit about these pros. And if, if I were a pro and the new paddle came out and I felt like I wanted to play with that paddle because I felt better, what's their agreement with their current? Do they have a choice with who they're playing with? You know, because Eula has his name on it, right? So mm-hmm. he's obviously playing with that and probably involved. Yeah. He's he's locked in for a few years. I, I don't think I don't think he can. I guess he could probably buy his way out, but no, he, he's locked in. But yeah, most people they have like a, a small contract with someone for a few thousand dollars or a few hundred yeah. dollars. They promote them on social media on their following, and they give out discounts at their local courts to say, "Hey, would you like to buy one? I, I get a percentage or whatever." But yeah, they showcase the paddles that they like, and they say, "Hey, I'd love to be a sponsor." But you could go after, there's very few pros, right? In terms of the triangle of how many people play, you've got a very few pros at the top, and then you have sort of the amateur. Are you going after all those markets? Do you have one in mind that you think is going to be more likely to use your paddle? I think I think instructors and clubs, that's the first thing I'm going to go for. I'm going to build my way up. My short-term goal is to just get my name out there and, and create a really amazing paddle that I can keep developing and keep making better for the sport to change it. And uh, long term is to be someone big. That's all right. Like go big or go home. I really like that. Part of why I wanted to talk to you and sit down is I think you and and Level Up in general and your parents who are just really well steeped in the business, they understand the business of pickleball through the magazine and through the camps. But you have come up through that and you have a really good understanding of what the sport can do and what the technology can do to improve the sport. And I think that's really good because, again, so reiterating, there are a lot of paddle brands out there, but they may not have the background that you have to really understand paddle technology or even players and and what they need to do and how they need to feel. So I think there's a lot of room for education in the paddle industry. And like you just said, with the swing weight, for example, that's something I sort of recently started to understand. And I think there's now ways you can rate swing weight, right? And I think that's really important. So I think it's really great that you've taken that into consideration. Well, Brendan, we're super excited. We, of course, are palette collectors and (laughs) always want to try the latest. So I really appreciate you sitting down and we will put all your links in the show notes. And I hope you'll check back in with us after it takes off and you're this huge brand. Don't forget about us. Um, And (laughs) everyone who's listening to subscribe. We did another episode with your father about Level Up Pickleball Camps. I hope people will listen to that too. That was great to learn about what goes on at the camps. We were the first reveal of your paddle because he held one up. So now we wanted to be the first ones to share what your paddle is is all about. So again, thank you so much for sitting down and uh, wish you all the luck and keep us posted. Yeah, thank you, Crystal. Since 2005, Pickwall paddle technology has remained virtually unchanged. That is until now. Our team of pro players set out with a new vision in mind. A vision to elevate the sport and enhance level of play through innovative technology. As teaching professionals, we understand how a paddle shape, composition, and weight can impact a player's game. We've aimed to raise the bar. Our line of paddles underwent a year-long prototype phase, and through extensive collaboration and dedication, we have succeeded in creating a revolutionary paddle series. Get ready to experience the Trinity Revolution. I've been a head pro at Level Up Pickleball since 2018. I've taught thousands of people at all levels on how to become better players. Offering guidance has been incredibly rewarding. I've listened to what players wanted in a paddle. The response, a paddle that fit their game. A paddle that has maximum sweet spot for beginners to hit the ball. A paddle that has great power and responsiveness to outmatch the bangers. And a paddle with maximum spinning control so advanced players can carve and manipulate the ball. I've always believed there's a lot of room for innovation in a paddle design. So I made it a mission to create the ultimate pickleball paddle, one that could revolutionize the game for everyone. A year-long dedication to research and development involving over 100 prototypes led to the birth of the Trinity Revolution Series. High-performance paddles that seamlessly integrate control, power, and spin. With a cutting-edge design and meticulous craftsmanship, these paddles are bound to enhance your game. The ethos, the logos, the pathos. The goal was simple, to help players of all abilities to level up their game. 
This isn't just a product. It's a coming together, an idea to take this sport to a higher level. Our dream of creating a revolutionary paddle series has now become a reality. Are you ready to elevate your pickleball game? Join us in embracing the future of pickleball, where passion, innovation, and dedication combine to create something truly exceptional. Get your hands on a Trinity paddle today and revolutionize your game. Hey guys, thanks for listening to Simply Pickleball. We will be back very soon with great interviews, discussions, and more all about pickleball. Don't forget to subscribe to our channels on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, or any of your favorite podcasting outlets. Until next time, happy dinking.